All right, so today's video is about one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration. Keep in mind that when the acceleration is constant, the instantaneous acceleration is equal to the average acceleration. What this mean, what this does for us is it allows us to use the formula or the equation for average acceleration rather than the one for instantaneous acceleration which contains the limit sign. So for instantaneous acceleration, we have the limit as the change in time approaches zero of the change in velocity over the change in time. Whereas for average acceleration, we have just the change in velocity over the change in time. So this would be ideal to work with. And since these two are equal, we can completely get rid of this limit sign and work with this average, velo average acceleration formula. But we don't have to call it average because the two are equivalent. So what we are left with is the acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. Now when you're looking through a textbook on one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration, you notice that most of the section is just a manipulation of expressions. So you might think that you have lots of different formulas to memorize. Well, in all truth, all you really have to memorize, and you shouldn't have to memorize it, this concept either, but all that needs to be known is this. From this idea right here, you can pull out any of the other equations within that section. All right, so when you open your textbook to constant acceleration, you notice so many manipulations of these formulas. How do they do this? What's going on? Well, you take this basic formula, the one for constant acceleration, and you ask yourself, is there any other way I can write these two terms here? The answer to that is yes. We know that the change in velocity is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity, which we could also write as the final velocity minus the velocity at time equals zero. The change in time is equal to the final time minus the initial time, which we can write as the final time minus the time at zero or zero. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in our two new expressions here into our formula and replace them for change in v and change in t. So what we have now is acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity at time is zero over time. These two expressions here are absolutely equivalent. Now it's important to know that this is for constant acceleration. All right. So anyway, in the textbook, it'll it'll be like, well, here's here's a formula for the final position, and here's a formula for the final velocity. So let's start off with one. Let's let's create a formula for the final velocity of a particle in one dimension with the constant acceleration. What is the final velocity? So what we want, when I say that, what we want is v is equal to something. So what we'll do is we'll solve for v. So we multiply each side by the change in the time. And we get v minus v initial is equal to a t as the, a, the t's here cancel and a t, a times t is just a t. So next step we have to do to solve for v is to add the initial velocity to each side. This yields final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the rate of acceleration times the elapse in time. So if you know a particle is moving in one dimension with a constant acceleration Instead of using this formula here for the fi to determine the final velocity, all you did was solved for the final velocity, so you can use that formula instead. All right, so this is a very powerful expression. It enables us to determine the final velocity of a particle in one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration as long as we know the initial velocity 
and the rate of acceleration. So, continuing along with the theme of this section of uh, manipulating expressions, what do we know about velocity, the average velocity? As we notice here, if you look at this, this is very similar to y equals mx plus b. Notice if you just rearrange it, see this is an unknown and this is an unknown and these would be two values that you would know. So in reality, this is linear, which means the average velocity, which is this, is going to be equal to the average of the initial velocity and the final velocity. The arithmetic mean of the initial velocity and the final velocity. And it's because it's linear in nature. So, following the theme of manipulating these expressions to, for, uh, for finding things simply, like uh, finding the final velocity simple. Well, there's a simple formula for the final velocity and it derived from the acceleration being equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. It might have taken a little bit more leg wor work to determine the final velocity of a particle if only you knew the acceleration is equal to change in velocity over the change in time. But it's so easy to solve for it yourself, don't try to remember it. Anyway, moving along, this change in x here can be rewritten as the final position minus the initial position. And the change in time can be rewritten as, in this case, just t because we're dealing with the initial time is equal to zero, so we don't need to write that. So rewriting this expression by after subbing, substituting these two terms in, we achieve the final position minus the initial position over the change in time is equal to one half the initial velocity plus the final velocity. From here, let's let's say we wanted to know the final position of the object. Well, in that case, we would just solve for the final position. To do that, we first multiply each side by t. leaving us with the final minus the initial is equal to one half of the initial velocity plus the final velocity times two times t sorry all that's left from here is adding your initial position to each side so adding the initial here and the initial here leaving us with just this term the uh, final position so, manipulating this expression via the average velocity and using the fact that this whole thing, this uh, expression here is a linear expression, we achieved this formula here for the final position. And if you open up your textbook, or if you have a textbook, you'll see this formula here. And it may be, seem a little difficult to memorize. So don't try to memorize it. Just remember the acceleration formula. And just think about breaking it into its pieces as far as you can go. And you, get, you, you will achieve new expressions as you go along. All right, so now we're here with a final position expression. Imagine that we don't know what the final velocity is though. We can create a new expression that's also powerful. So remember the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus a times the acceler times t, right? So what you do from here is you simply substitute this right here. So first I'll go ahead and just factor this one half through and this t through. So we get one half the initial velocity times time plus one half the final velocity times time. And now we'll plug in this expression for the final velocity here. This gives us 
The final position is equal to the initial position plus one-half of the initial velocity times time plus one-half of the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time times time. All I did was take took this formula here, this expression, and plugged it into for the final velocity there. Because remember, we're trying to think of something to where an expression so we don't need to know the final velocity. So when you simplify this, you end up getting the final position is equal to the initial position plus one half of the initial velocity times time plus one half the initial velocity times time plus one half the acceleration times time squared right and then from here you notice that these are like terms here you have your one half vit one half vit a half plus a half is a whole so your final position is then equal to your initial position plus your initial velocity times time plus one half of the acceleration t squared and this is the formula for the final velocity as well and it's equivalent to the one up here which is equivalent to the one before that and going all the way back down to where we have acceleration as change in velocity over change in time so it's just a manipulation of the expressions so that you, you so you can make little amounts of information useful. All right, so we can further manipulate this expression to create a new expression that doesn't even involve time. We could completely remove time altogether. So when you take this expression, the final position expression, and you look at t here, remember earlier that the final velocity was equal to the initial velocity plus a times t. So why not just solve for t here and plug that in too? So we'll subtract the v, the initial velocity from each side, leaving us with this, and then we'll divide each side by a, and we'll just go back to calling this final and initial here. So this leaves us with time is actually equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the acceleration. So let's go ahead and plug this new expression for time into here and see what that does for us. So we get change color. So we get the final position is equal to the initial position plus one half of the initial velocity plus the final velocity times the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the acceleration. And this simplifies to the initial position plus the final velocity squared minus the initial velocity squared over 2a and that's it. This, uh, this equation provides the final velocity in terms of the initial velocity, the constant acceleration, and the position of the particle. So for this expression you don't even need time at all. So that's basically it for this section. You just have to learn how to manipulate that original that original formula for acceleration as the change in velocity over the change in time just break it into its constituent components and see what kind of uh, relationships you can achieve out of it the four formulas listed are commonly referred to as the kinematic equations for particles under constant acceleration in this video we derived each one of these equations from acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. So when it comes time for the test, don't fret about memorizing a bunch of formulas. If you forget, you could, you could always derive it again. Thanks for watching. I hope you come and see me again soon.